Welcome here to ABC4 News at 5. I'm Sarah Murphy. And I'm Brian McElhatton. We want to thank you for choosing us on this primary election night. Our team coverage begins right now all across Utah. ABC4's Canon Seacrest is live in Washington County to share how the election day has fared in our southernmost county. And Annika Johns is giving us a live look at election day in Utah's most populous county. Now, meanwhile, Jordan Tracy is at Utah's Capitol to give us a look at the contentious governor's primary race. We're going to send it over to him right Right now, Jordan, tell us if you can hear us, what are you seeing so far today? Good evening, Sarah and Brian. You know, in this gubernatorial race, if you if you think about it back in 2020, Governor Cox in his primary faced a larger field and ended up getting a very slim victory, but much different this time. He is facing Phil Lyman, mano e mano. So let's talk about this campaign and where it has been uh, at this point. We spoke with Phil Lyman about this campaign and, and what's pretty common in a Republican primary where there's a challenger against an incumbent. They're going to question that incumbent's conservatism, and that's exactly what Lyman has done in this campaign. He has questioned Spencer Cox on things like vetoing a bill that would have banned uh, transgender athletes and women's sport, implementing DEI programs across the state, as well as uh, his implementation of COVID protocols. It was something that he has definitely questioned throughout this campaign. But one of the key issues that Phil Lyman has talked about is this idea of, of switching on its had this top-down government approach, which he says is the current administration. Now he wants to make sure the power is coming from the bottom up to the top. You disperse power as far down as you can get it, so it's closest to the people who are making those decisions that are, that are most affected by it. Um, you know, our education system has, has become a little top-heavy. Our water control has become a little top-heavy, and to have a government that wants to push that back down to the people, um, it it works. And Sarah, looking into this race, it has tightened since uh, the beginning. Early polls had a 40-point lead for Cox, and that's not the case. A new poll that just came out from Noble Predictive Insights actually has it as a 13-point difference. So Lyman said he has been very happy about closing that gap and thinks he has a lot of energy going into tonight. Now, one of the things we'll be keeping an eye on is that turnout in Utah counties as well as Salt Lake counties as and see what this race will actually turn out to be and how it shakes out. Now, we also spoke to representatives from the Cox campaign today. We'll have more on that coming up at six. But for now, reporting live in Highland, Jordan Tracy, ABC4 News. Back to you. Okay, Jordan, thanks so much. We're continuing our team coverage now on the race for Utah's open Senate seat. Kate Gardner joins us after speaking with some of the front runners there. Kate. Yeah, well, it is hot out here and things are heating up in this race. Now you can see behind me, there's not a whole lot going on, but the John Curtis campaign group, they're getting ready to celebrate. They think they're going to be celebrating tonight. Now, this is where they're going to be holding their watch party around 630 this evening. Now, the race for the Senate seat, there are four Republican candidates hoping to win this primary. Utah House Speaker Brad Wilson is one. Moxie Pest Control CEO Jason Walton is another. U.S. Representative John Curtis, a third. And Riverton Mayor Trent Staggs is the fourth. Now, recent polls show that Curtis is leading the race. I spoke with him this afternoon, and here's what he has to say about how his team is feeling this afternoon. Well, I think what you've seen a result of uh, eight years of me being mayor, seven years of me serving in Congress, and people like my work. And it surprised me, uh, the amount of people that have weighed in on this race. Now, those recent polls are showing that Mayor Trent Staggs is coming in in second place right now. He's actually been endorsed by former President Donald Trump. I spoke with him as well this afternoon. Here's what he has to say about his team's filling. We are the Republican endorsed candidate in this race, you know, winning the convention at 70 percent and getting all of these endorsements. It's been just fantastic. Now, both Curtis and Staggs tell me that they believe their team is going to take it home tonight. We'll be here for the reception here at the John Curtis area. We're also going to have someone there watching the Stags party to see what happens this evening. Of course, I'm going to be continuing to track this race throughout the evening, and we'll keep you updated on the results both on air and online at abc4.com. Live in Provo, Kate Garner, back to you. Kate, thank you very much. We'll follow along with you. Now, we're continuing our coverage here in Salt Lake County. That's where we find ABC4's Annika Johns this evening. She joins us live from the county polling center with more. Annika, how has the turnout been so far today? 
Well, Sarah, it's been quite a steady flow of different individuals coming by today. Now here at this location at the Salt Lake County Government Center, they can either go inside and vote in person or they can drop off their ballot box like you can see just behind me here, dropping off that ballot of theirs just right there. And so here in Salt Lake County, like I said, you have those two options. So there are 19 local excuse me, locations where individuals who wish to vote in person can do so. However, if you don't feel like coming in person, like I said, you can swing by one of Salt Lake County's 28 ballot boxes that are scattered across the county. Now, I chatted with a few voters today who came in person to drop off their ballots or use one of the kiosks just inside here. And they say if you're thinking about not voting, they say to do it anyways. They say you have a right to vote and a right to use your voice. And while your input may seem small, your vote could be the deciding factor. I'll go with the cliche that every vote matters. And it's the closest elections that generate the most interest. And any one of us could tip the scales of democracy in the direction that we so please, right or left. Now, there are still three hours to come and cast your vote here. Now, if you are in Salt Lake County and you're looking for a way to find your location, you can visit our website at abc4.com where it, there was a link that will take you to the official voting website. There you can just input your address and it will tell you your closest voting location. So make sure, like I said, you have three hours left. So get out there and vote. Reporting live from Salt Lake City, Annika Johns, ABC4 News. Annika, thank you. Finally, with our team coverage for you now, we're heading to Washington County, where voters are heading to the polls there today for the primary elections. Our Southern Utah correspondent, Cannon Sechrist, is reporting live from the Dixie Convention Center in St. George, one of the many voting locations across Southern Utah. Cannon? That's right, guys. Yeah, I'm out here at the Dixie Convention Center, just right behind me there. And uh, there's been a constant flow of vehicles uh, that's been seen as uh, local residents come to cast their vote and make their voices heard. Voters, voters are headed to the polls to choose candidates for a range of local and state positions. Notable contests include the races for county commissioner and staff legislative seats, with the results set to influence the political direction ahead of the general election. I spoke with the poll manager, Lisa Sandberg, earlier this morning about this year's voters' turnout so far and what she expects by the end of the day. Last I heard reported from the county, we had 34.3% uh, have turned in their ballots. So we've gotten another 244 today. I anticipate we'll be somewhere between 750 and 1,000 today. The polls in St. George opened this morning at about 7 a.m. and will remain open to the public till about 8 p.m. Unofficial election results will be posted on state and county websites. In Southern Utah, Cannon Secrets, ABC4 News.